We're here outside the Senate chambers with Matt Simon uh, with uh, MVP now. Marijuana Policy Project, MPP.org. Longtime cannabis activist here in New Hampshire. You've been sort of seeing all this through over close to a decade now. Uh, 28 what, years. What I haven't been losing quite that long. I've only been <laughs> losing seven, maybe eight years. What happened in there tonight? Well, it's the New Hampshire Senate. I'll start with the positive. Uh, the House has passed six decrim bills since 2008. This is the first time the Senate has actually talked about any of them. So there's the positive. The negative is a bill that should have passed that was in fact very compromised and very struck, heavily amended to put things in the law enforcement order. Yeah. Cops would still have been able to arrest people under certain circumstances. They still could have been hauled into court. But the bill would have changed the penalty for first offense possession from a misdemeanor to a violation and it would have been a good thing. And it would have gone back to the House for further discussion at it passed. So instead what happened, we had some Republicans who objected to some of the language, they stripped it out, some of the Democrats freaked out, and how do we get 13 of them to agree? And the bill wound up on the table, there was a bunch of shuffling around, they kept calling recesses, they kept trying to figure out what they could get together, because today's the deadline, and it has to be done tonight or it can't be done, so. So what was the original language that was introduced into the House several months ago? Well, that was introduced into the House, it was an ounce or less becomes a violation and a $100 fine for every offense, which is Massachusetts policy since 2008 and works great. Uh, the House amended it down to a half of an ounce and added escalating penalties. Uh, it would still have been a violation, but it would have been first offense, 100 bucks, second offense, 200 bucks, third and subsequent, 500 bucks, but it would never have risen to the level of a criminal offense, and nobody could ever have been arrested for that violation or hauled into court. So the Senate floor amendment compromised virtually all of that. It made it a quarter of an ounce for a first offense. It made a second offense still a misdemeanor, and subsequent, subsequent offenses still misdemeanors. Cops would have been able to arrest people at their discretion, and people would still be hauled into court. So it's hardly even a decriminalization bill by the time they got around to voting on it. It would have been a very small step. But for the Senate to take any step at all is obviously something we've been working for really, so, a really long time to make happen. Where, where do you go from here? Because I know that there are uh, procedures and rules that say that you can't introduce something that is too similar in consecutive years. And that's actually why the Senate failed to take up decrim last year is because it was too similar to what passed in 2013. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question, and this bill is actually not dead, it's on the table. It's because their session is over that it can't be brought back up this year, but it will still be on the table when January comes around and be the second year of the biennium. So new legislation can be introduced in the Senate, or this bill can be pulled off the table and dealt with by the Senate after we figure out some of these issues that caused everything to fall apart. So what can supporters of cannabis decrim do to help you and help others get something passed next year? Well, I think we learned a lot today, and I think you guys have footage of a lot of things we learned today. We found out who a few of the prohibitionists were and what their arguments are, and I'd be interested to see that video uh, used in some interesting ways, maybe. Uh, we know who the people are who are against this, and if we need to no, I'll be up for educate them as aggressively as possible, and if they're not going to vote for it next year, they're going to be up for re-election. So. so what do you say to the prohibitionist legislator that says, well, law enforcement tells me that nobody goes to jail for cannabis possession, therefore we should not decriminalize cannabis? Because it seems to me that if people aren't going to jail for it, then what's the problem with decriminalizing it? That's the point. And in many cases, the police themselves say we've already sort of de facto decriminalized because we don't send people to jail. Except for all are, the people that go to jail. Correct. And there are, I mean, so, so there are some <laughs> judges that I don't think have ever sentenced anybody to jail for possession. And there are other courts where we had a defense attorney testify that in one particular court, second offenses, this judge sends people to jail for 30 days. It does happen. Do, do you think that... But it's not the main point of the bill. Our jails right. are not full of marijuana users. That's not the point. Right. The point is why 
If people are just going to be fined 100 bucks at the end of the day, why shouldn't they just be fined 100 bucks? Why do they need to be arrested, hauled downtown, booked, hauled into court, deal with the prosecutor, take up the cop's time, take up the court's time, take up the person's time? Why in the world can't we just make it a fine? So do you think that some of the police and law enforcement that say people aren't in jail for cannabis are saying that because a lot of the people aren't in jail specifically for cannabis, they're in for violation of probation, that they violated because they possessed cannabis, but they were placed on probation because they possessed cannabis. So technically they're in for cannabis, but on paper they're in for VOP. I think you may be thinking more deeply than many if not most members of the Senate just by asking that question. <laughs> I don't think very many of them understand marijuana policy at even a basic level, unfortunately. So some of them do and we're gonna work with what we got and the only way to change laws in the state that I know of is to get the House and Senate to pass something. So we have to keep trying. I appreciate the efforts. Thank you guys. Thanks Matt. Thanks for coming and sticking around. No problem. Nice.